we're going to go over five things in 3D printing that might be handy for you to know. One of the greatest things about 3D printing for me is that I never stop learning things. I learn something new about 3D printing almost every day. So I thought I'd change up the video format a bit and I'd show you five things that I've learned over the years about 3D printing that have really helped me out. Now these aren't necessarily tips for beginners and some of them are kind of specific to a certain situation, but these are the ones that I thought that have helped me out the most during my 3D printing journey. And it wouldn't be Chris's basement if I didn't start this list with a tip for Marlin firmware. So here we are in the IDE in the configuration.h file of Marlin. And I can't even count how many times users have said to me they have a problem with their extruder, there's something wrong with their stepper driver, or their motor. And it's usually the same thing over and over. They're trying to test that driver before they heat it up the hot end. And prevent cold extrusion is what keeps that from happening. It's a safety precaution to keep you from trying to extrude filament when your hot end isn't heated up. But if you're trying to test a driver, it might be something that you overlook when you're troubleshooting that issue. You're troubleshooting your printer, you hit extrude and nothing happens, so you might automatically assume that there's something wrong with your main board or your printer. I have been guilty of this exact same scenario myself, and it took me a while to realize exactly what was going on. So if you're testing something like this and you have access to Marlin, you can just comment these two lines out and it will compile successfully. I do recommend that you leave this in place. It is a safety precaution to keep you from extruding filament when the hot end's cold. But for testing purposes, you can also run an M302 S0 or S1 to turn it on or off on the fly, and then it'll reset itself next time you reboot your printer. That can be really handy to have. And while we're here, let's talk about prevent lengthy extrude. So especially on a Bowden style printer where you have to load filament in the tube, you're going to have to extrude quite a bit to be able to load it all the way down to the hot end. And again, this is a safety precaution to keep you from extruding a mass amount of filament in case you punch something in wrong. So the default setting in Marlin will only let you extrude 200 millimeters. So say you have some G-code on your SD card that helps you load filament and you want to extrude 800 millimeters. Well, it's not going to let you do that because of this setting. Now you can increase this setting if you'd like. You could also comment it out. I don't recommend doing that, but it will compile. But if you don't have access to your Marlin code, I recommend just using a couple of small extrudes, maybe a hundred apiece in that G-code, to get it to work. This is another one of these settings that I've gotten a lot of questions about. Why won't my printer extrude over a certain amount? And this is probably what's causing it. Tip number two is about STL files, and this is something that has caused me issues over the years and can be really hard to figure out if you don't know what you're looking for. So when you slice your file and load it on your SD card and then go print it, you might see an issue in that print you might think is caused by your printer. Well, it could be caused by that STL file. And if you don't do a preview before you send that file to your SD card, you might not even know that it's a problem with the STL file. For example, we'll pull in the Benchy. So if we hit slice and we go to preview, you can see the Benchy, it looks just fine. If we go through all the layers, everything's there, it looks complete. And if you notice over here in Prusa Slicer, it actually tells you there's 1104 errors that it automatically repaired. Most slicers are going to do that nowadays, so this is fine to print, no issues at all. But what about the multicolor Benchy model? So let's delete this one, and we'll bring in the multicolored files. So we're looking okay, and it will slice. Slice is just fine, we can go through the layers, and it's looking pretty good. The new Prusa Slicer is great about fixing these models. But in this list over here, you'll notice that the whole file right here has an alert on it. If you hover over that, it has 27,000 backward edges. So just for an example, let's pull that hole into the old Slick 3R. We just pulled in the single whole file, and if we go to preview, you can see something's not quite right here. It's pretty obvious this file has some problems. Again, a lot of the newer slicers are going to be able to correct for this, so it shouldn't be an issue, but I'm just trying to show you what Prusa Slicer does. So back to Prusa Slicer, let's go ahead and delete our Benchy. Now previously, before slicers got really involved, we'd go to Mesh Mixer to fix something like this. So in Mesh Mixer, we'd import, we'd grab that whole file, we'd go to Analyze, Inspector. And you can see it found some errors in the model, we could just hit Auto Repair All, and that would fix the file up. Then we could go to File, Export, and we'll just go ahead and export as an STL. 
and we'll call it hole fixed. And then back to Prusa Slicer, let's go ahead and pull it all in using that new fixed file. We'll leave out the whole file that's damaged. We'll hit open. And over here, you can see all the STL files are clean. There are no errors. And back to Slick3R, if we pull in that new fixed whole file, the preview is looking a whole lot better. So that's the old way of doing things. But let's go back to Prusa Slicer. So we'll delete everything again. Let's bring our multi-piece model back in with that file that has the error not our fixed file. You can see our error right here. And nowadays you don't need to fix that file because we have Prusa Slicer. But what if you want to fix it and take it to another slicer or you need to export it for some other reason? Well, you can just come to this file list, right click on this error. It automatically sends it out to NetFab to fix it and it's going to bring it right back in all fixed up. And it might take a couple minutes, but it's going to come back and say it's been repaired successfully. We can just hit OK. And if we come back over, we still do have some errors, but now we only have 16 backward edges. So that's a lot better. Again, we have Prusa Slicer, so it's going to be able to print it anyway. But let's go ahead and export it. So we'll right click this gear icon. We'll hit Export as STL. And let's save it as Whole PS Fixed. We'll hit Save. And then if we go back to Slick 3R, we'll bring that fixed file in. And then we'll slice it and it's looking a whole lot better than the first file. I have found that this doesn't work perfect with every file and it can take a long time, but it is there if you need it. Also, sorry to Mac and Linux people, it is only available in Windows 10 because of the licensing with Autodesk. The next tip is about interfacing with your printer's main board, mainly some of the more affordable boards that use this chip right here, the CH340 serial chip. So maybe you want to connect up to your printer with Printerface, or you want to flash some code to it, but it just won't talk to your computer, especially in Windows. Well, it might be a problem with that CH340 chip, mainly the driver that it's using to access it. So if we go to the Windows key and head into Control Panel, you can open Device Manager, and a lot of times with these boards, you'll see the computer call it something strange. A lot of times it'll call it ramps, but we need to know it as a CH340 device. So with your device plugged in, we just need to go grab the CH340 drivers for that serial chip, and we should be able to use it just fine. These drivers are available from a lot of different websites. We can just go out here and download them. We'll go to Downloads, and we'll unzip, and just click on the EXE. Remember, your board needs to be plugged in. The default driver that it lists should work just fine for Windows 10. Hit Install. Driver Install Success. Hit OK. We can close this. And if we go back to Device Manager and we unplug our board and then plug it back in, it's now listed as a USB serial device, a CH340. And that's what we want to see. Now we can open up Proner Face again and hit Connect. And now we're communicating with our board just fine. So if you had an issue before connecting up to your printer and you never got it fixed, this might be your problem. Give it a try. The next tip I have is the website gcode.ws. This is a G-code analyzer site. You can upload your G-code files and it'll show you all the moves that the printer is going to make when it processes that file. And this has come in handy numerous times. Not only will it spit out the time that the print is going to take, but it'll show you each one of the moves. So if you're having a problem with the printer, you can examine it line by line and see what the printer is going to do. So let's just choose a G-code file. It'll run an analyze and you can look at it in 2D mode, 3D mode, you can look at the G code itself, but in 2D mode, you can use the slider across the bottom to go through each layer as the printer completes it, or the one on the right, layer by layer. It's going to show you exactly what the printer is doing, where the printer moves. If you hit layer info over here on the left, it'll tell you what all the colors mean and what speed that is assumed for each move. So this top infill right here, 20 millimeters a second, while the travel moves are 180 millimeters a second. Again, this comes in really handy if you're trying to diagnose a 3D printer problem. And this last tip for Fusion 360 comes from my buddy James over the Print and Play YouTube channel. This saved me a ton of headache. When I first started with Fusion 360, my Windows 10 machine would crash repeatedly every time I tried to make a large edit on an object. And James found a great workaround. All you got to do is go click on your username and then go to Preferences. And on your graphics driver, switch it from Auto Select to DirectX 9. 
And when you apply and restart your machine, your Fusion 360 is going to be a whole lot more predictable. I almost never get a crash in Fusion now. It works great. So if you're having a lot of crashing and it's really frustrating, give this a try. So there you go. Five things that might be handy to know revolving around 3D printing. I know these have really helped me out in the past. It's probably not going to help every user, but if you need to know this information, it could be a little challenging to find, so this might be helpful. If you like this format of video, please let me know in the comments. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.